Why use pointers? What's the point? Take a look at C++ pointers and references today. And we're going to use a program, a free compiler called Bloodshed. And if you're a Linux aficionado, it's based on the free GCC compiler. Okay, and it's a free download. Just, you know, Google for Bloodshed or Dev C++. So for this project, you won't really need Visual Studio. And we're going to look at some of the differences between, you know, passing by value, passing by reference, using a pointer, using an alias, um, you know, just doing a, a copy. So I'm going to make a new project in Bloodshed. And this will be a console project. I'm just going to call this one Pointers. And it doesn't really matter where you build it. Uh, we'll throw it over here. Okay. And talking about pointers here. And also the difference between the stack and the heap. Okay. So um, we're going to look at creating a pointer, a pointer and a pointy, and we're going to look at uh, passing by value, passing by reference. All right. So let's say that I, I first I'm going to create two integers um, inside of main here. And let's see. 459 okay these are normal integers and right now these integers are on what we call the stack all right and the stack is addressed memory um, but it's not necessarily the most efficient way to store things so if I were to move these variables let, let's say that I were going to take the value of y and store it in x and if the stack were up here I'll draw some lines All right, so I'll move the cursor up here, but let, you know, let's say that the value of x was here and the value of y was here. We'd have to move values up and down the stack, you know, addressed in their hexadecimal equivalents to copy values from one variable or container object to another. It's not the most efficient way of doing things. A more efficient way of managing memory is by using what's called the heap or the free store, okay, and C++. And the heap or free store, it's, it's all pointers. It's all accessed with pointers. Okay. And if you were to think of it, let's see, let's do this and this. Try to do this in ASCII here, but if you were to think of it, rather than a stack, you know, the stack, you, you can think of it like, you know, when you go to a buffet, you know, they have all the dishes or plates stacked on kind of a spring-loaded device, and you take one dish off and the other dishes pop up. That's kind of the stack, and it's not the most efficient way to store and manipulate uh, and modify values because it involves moving actual objects. On the, on the other hand, if you use the heap or the free store, it all works by pointers. So if I were to create, create an object here, say x, and another object here, say y, I wouldn't have to move all the objects in between to take a value in y and store it in x. But the way that I access everything on the heap is x would have a pointer to it, y would have a pointer to it, and I could just swap the pointers. Okay, and you know pointers are much smaller, <coughs> much less demanding on system resources like memory and CPU cycles than actual objects. Actual classes of objects could be many hundreds or even thousands of bytes large and swapping those around on the stack could be very expensive in terms of system performance but if I'm just moving pointers around and the objects themselves stay where they are it's much more efficient you know less than a byte and it would be the analogy would be let's say that we had two rooms that were furnished identically they both had tables chairs computers they were identical okay which is pretty much what you have inside your computer right your computer memory you have identical you know, bytes composed of 8 bits, billions of these bytes in the memory registry. So imagine two rooms furnished identically. Okay, room number one, room number two. And let's say that we want to move all the furniture or move move the, you know, we normally meet in room one, but now we want to meet in room two. Well, there, there's two ways we could, we could do this. We could take all the furniture in room one, 
and move it out and put it in room two and we could take all the furniture in room two and move it out and put it in room one um, and that would work but wouldn't it be easier if we simply switched the signs what if instead we took you know the sign that said number one over the door of room one and put it where room two was and what if we took the sign that said number two over the door of room two and put it where room number one is it would achieve the same thing if the rooms are furnished identically and then we would have swapped the rooms so that's kind of synonymous with pointers or at least you can kind of make an analogy there of you know people a lot of people that are new to C++ are like you know they hate pointers or they're like why are you using pointers I don't understand you know, Java hides the pointers it just makes it simpler well because because it gives you a lot more control over memory because it ends up being a lot more efficient in the end let's take a look at pointers and pointees so every pointer has a pointee okay and the pointee is simply the variable or object um, that the pointer points to okay so that, that would be a pointee and the pointer so how would we set that up? Well, it works with, um, you know, pointers pretty much work with two operators, um, what we call the ampersand and the asterisk, all right, or the address of operator and indirection. And the way that this would work, let's say that I wanted to set up a pointer to point to Y, or well, we'll use X, X is at the top here. I would type the data type, and I would type the asterisk, and that tells, you know, our computer or the compiler, hey, this isn't a normal integer like a variable, but this is a pointer to an integer. Now I can call it anything, banana, um, you know, I couldn't give it the same name as X, but typically what, you know, if you like Hungarian notation or a lot of people use, they have their own nomenclature where they use prefixes, typically people will put like a lowercase p in front of it. So I could say px or px like that either way. But this asterisk is what makes this a pointer, okay? Doesn't matter what we call the name. It's a pointer and the data type, it has to match up. So I couldn't, if I had a double or a string or some other kind of variable, I couldn't make, you know, px point to that. px can only point to an integer. So the asterisk is what makes px a pointer, okay? And or that denotes or tells us that, hey, it's not a normal integer. No, it points to an integer. It has to match that data type. So it could not be made to point to a string or a character or some other object. It needs to point to something that it matches. I'm going to get rid of this actual assignment here. And in order to make it point to a variable, I need to use the ampersand, which in C++ is known as the address of operator. And on a normal variable, if, if I were to do this, that would give me, if I were going to you know, pass it to C out or something, it would give me the address of X, okay? Or that would give me the address of Y, okay? But in this example, let's say that I want pointer X to point to the address of the variable X, okay? And that's how I would actually set that up, all right? So asterisk and the ampersand this sets up the pointer and now this becomes the pointy x is our pointy all right now in addition to using you know re remembering to use the ampersand the address of operator and the asterisk when you set a pointer up when you retrieve a value um, that a pointer points to you have to remember to use the asterisk again and it's called dereferencing okay so We'll put notes up here. Sets up a pointer and do references um, what a pointer points to. Okay. So it sets up a pointer and dereferences what a pointer points to. And we have to remember that um, it wouldn't be a syntax error if I tried to just you know see out px without dereferencing it. But it wouldn't necessarily do what I want. It would just give me the memory address of the variable that px points to, as opposed to fetching and retrieving the value stored in that variable. So to illustrate the point, we'll use that. We're using the C standard library in Bloodshed, so I'm just going to use cout. And I'll drop down a couple of lines with some escape sequences. And value of px without without the dereference. Okay. And somebody's sending a major print job there. And then we'll, let's just copy this and we'll display the value with dereferencing, okay? 
All right, so I'm going to compile the project. And now I'm going to run the project. All right, and you can see this has the value 10, and that's just a hexadecimal memory address. Let me add so that pause isn't on the same line. Hang on, I'll drop that down a few lines there. Okay. So value px without the dereference, memory address. Value px with the dereference, and then it fetches or retrieves the value stored or you know contained within the variable x, which is 10. So anytime I want to actually get at the value, change the value, manipulate the value, copy the value from one variable to another using pointers, I have to remember to dereference. Okay. And anytime I set up a pointer, I have to remember to use both the asterisk to indicate or declare this as a pointer and then the ampersand to have it point to the address of something unless the pointer points to another pointer in which case I wouldn't have to use the address of operator so if that's the case in that example then how would we get how would we build a pointer and have it point to y how could we do that well same thing right and asterisk it would have to match the data type in other words I couldn't have a pointer to a double or a float or a string or anything like that or a character array even, it has to match the correct data type. All right, so it has to be a pointer to an integer. Asterisk, you can call it anything you like, but a lot of people like to prefix it with a P. That indicates it's a pointer. So I'll call it PY. And we'll use the ampersand or address of operator. And same thing, I make it point to the address of Y. Okay. Now let's say that I wanted to swap the values of those pointers. I could use the pointers themselves, but let's say we're going to take x and y and we'll just kind of trade the values back and forth. To do that, we're going to need a temporary value because once we copy the value of y into the, you know, into x, we're going to lose what's stored in x unless we have a temporary variable. So we're just going to make a temporary variable on the stack, an integer called temp, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to assign it the value of what's stored in x. And I could use x, but what if I wanted to use the pointer? Then what I want to put in that variable is not the memory address or not. I want to actually put the value stored in the variable that you know px points to. I decide to use this pointer. So again, I have to dereference. All right, px, I have to dereference it. And when I do this, oops, let me make that. When I dereference this, it's going to go and retrieve the value 10 stored in the variable x. If I did this, it would be an error. It would be a problem because, you know, I'm just trying to take a memory address. I'm trying to take a pointer, and I, I cannot store that. Matter of fact, here, we'll just, if I build it in the compiler, notice it tells us invalid conversion from a pointer to an integer to an integer. So syntactically, that's incorrect. We can't do that. So if I add the asterisk there and I rebuild the project, syntactically that's okay. Now we're, now we're able to do that. So we took what's in X, which was the 10. We stored it in our temp variable here. So it's waiting there. Now how would I take the values stored in X and Y and swap them? Well, again, I'm going to have to dereference. I don't want to swap the pointers. I mean, I could. I could say PX is equal to PY. But that's not necessarily doing what we think. If I build the project, syntactically it's okay, but now we're saying, well, okay, px is pointing to py. So let's see what happens. If we see out, we'll see out the value there. And I'll comment these, let me comment these lines out. And we'll dereference. Okay, so all right. So we'll dereference px. We'll dereference py. Value of x and y. Let's build the project. And oops, left off my stream operator there. All right. All right, let's run it. Okay. 
So now if you look, the value of x, the value of y, when I dereference, now they both point to the same value. So it's not achieving what we expect or what we want necessarily. Syntactically, it's okay. But logically, it's not doing what we want. So if I'm going to swap the values, I have to dereference. I have to use the asterisk there. Now I'll actually get the value that px points to, and I'll actually get the value that py points to, and I'll swap it or store it inside of x. Okay? And then, so now that eff effectively eradicated the 10 stored in x, but that's okay because we saved it in our temp variable. So now how do I take that and I want to put it back into y? Well, I have to dereference y. Remember the assignment operator says take what's on the right and store it on what's on the left? Okay, and I don't have to dereference temp because it's just a plain old integer. It's not a pointer to an integer, just, a, just an integer. But I do need to dereference y because I want to get what it points at. So to start out with, x was 10 and y was 459. Let's rebuild the project and see if we swap those values. All right, so now they are. Via the pointers, x now has 459 instead of y, and y now has 10 via the temporary variable. Okay? So that's just kind of the idea of setting up a basic pointer and maybe some of the errors that you might encounter if you don't remember to dereference when you need to. Um, another common problem people make is they might remember the asterisk when they set up a pointer or they dereference, but they forget to use the address of operator or the ampersand properly. And again, notice it'll tell me invalid conversion from integer to a pointer to an integer. So I can't do that. I have to use the address of operator. And I'll throw those back there. And, oops. Okay. So just sort of basic, just sort of the basic ideas. Now, this brings us up to, well, what about writing functions um, with arguments and parameters that use pointers versus functions that don't? And in addition, there's also something that looks, um, you know, something like a pointer, or, but, you know, it's, it's called a reference or an alias. It works like a pointer, but, you know, the code is substantially different because you don't have to dereference and you don't use an asterisk or even have to use the ampersand when you set it up. And so we'll, we'll take a look at that as well.